And now we continue our journey down the River Nile. Let's go now to our team, Mohammed Mohammed and CCTV's own Penina Karibe. They're coming to us live from the Egyptian capital, Cairo. Mohammed, Penina, hi there. Hi, Pen hi, Beatrice. It's a pleasure being back to you again. As you can see, we're halfway in the following up and tracking of the mighty Nile and its journey across Egypt, trying to figure out how far it has affected life here. We started over in Aswan, moved to Luxor, and now we are in Cairo, this wonderful city full of life and energy. As you can hear now, there are lots of noise and music, lots of people and cars in the street. And at the back, the mighty Nile is like the uh, source of life here in Cairo, giving pleasure to everybody here. Right here with me in Cairo, my co-anchor, Panina. Panina, as we are almost halfway in our coverage, tell me about the, the catchy moments in this coverage and things you've done so far. Well, I think, Mohammed, for me, Aswan has captured my heart. It's a beautiful city, very scenic landscape. I mean, just looking at it, it's just desert. You know, you have this huge Nile running through it. And then right out of the Nile, it's just rocks and hills and desert. But also the town itself is it's quite a very sparsely populated place. And everybody knows everybody. So it got this um, homely feeling to it. So you step into Aswan city and you almost feel like you're part of that community. And then of course there was Yasser giving us a ride through the Valley of Kings and Queens and just seeing where these uh, leaders of ancient Egypt were laid to rest. I think that was quite remarkable. Well, throughout this journey here on the Nile, one of the things that have emerged is just how significant the river Nile is to Egyptians. But the river is also facing one huge problem, and that's pollution. Is there a Just north of Cairo, the river splits ahead of its final run to the sea. To the northeast flows the Damietta Arm. To the northwest, the Rashid Branch. And that's where our journey takes us. Here in Kanatar, this weir allows the locals to walk on water, almost. But it's also a catch point for rubbish and waste thrown into the river. It might look beautiful from the outside, but this glass of water could be a lethal cocktail. The water contains effluent from factories, chemicals from farming, and the untreated waste from at least 40% of Egypt's households. At times, the Nile is so poisonous, treatment plants on the Rashid branch can't cope, and the entire water supply is cut off. People here live daily with the reality of the Nile's pollution, and they're worried. on the surface, the Nile can be beautiful, the gift of life indeed. But often, it's not a very clean one. Just below the surface, pollutants mire the majesty of this great river. So what's the answers to all this? To find out, we're going back to Cairo to meet the man who is in charge of cleaning up the River Nile. Ahmed Abul Saud heads Egypt's Environmental Affairs Agency. The Nile is his biggest challenge. Uh, River Nile is the, uh, the life for Egypt. And this is almost the sole source of fresh water for uh, the Egyptians. That's why the Ministry of Environment is putting the uh, depolluting the River Nile is one of the first priority. The government has already forced dozens of factories to clean up their act, but they're not the biggest culprit. We have also the sewage, the, the untreated uh, sewage water, that uh, municipal sewage that goes to the drains and from the drains to the River Nile, because 
the sewage surfaces is not yet covered in whole Egypt. It's, it's high in the urban areas, but it's very low in the rural areas, in the villages. What are the efforts by the ministry and the government to eradicate the pollution of the Nile? We have to reach the people themselves. Maybe we, the language has to, has to be changed. We have to talk to the people for, with the language they, they can understand. Even if all goes to plan, the government says cleaning up this river could take at least 15 years and around $15 billion. What the Nile needs now is for Egyptians to change the way they treat the river. The gift of life can no longer double up as a waste disposal unit. It's ironic that people saying that Egypt is the gift of the Nile are almost the same people polluting it. We have a major problem here in Egypt and we have to face it. And as the experts said, we have to engage ordinary people in preserving and protecting the Nile. Let's try to be positive, Panina. Have you ha witnessed any experiences that could be positive in preserving Niles across the world? Well, I have, Mohammed, but speaking about my home country, Kenya, they've enacted uh, some laws to try and curb pollution. But of course, we are still yet to make strides. But I have seen a success story in Rwanda, where besides enacting those laws and effecting them, they have what they call a public uh, cleanup campaign. Now this happens every so often, usually on a weekend, where every family, be it in the city or in the village, goes out and cleans. And if you do not, then you're penalized. And I guess that creates a sense of responsibility and, and discipline, even for children where you grow up, knowing that this is wrong and this is how I should keep my, my, my city or my village. And I'm guessing that would perhaps work here in Cairo, where we see a lot of activity in the central business district. I mean, just look at this, Mohammed. Yes. It looks like one big continuous party. Is this how a typical night in Cairo looks like? Usually when it's night, everybody goes out, especially in summer nights, have fun. It's, it's like the place for fun for rich and poor, for from all walks of life. If you're a rich person, you'll go to a cafe or a restaurant and pay a lot of money. But if you're an ordinary person with a family, you'll just walk by, have a feluca or a motorboat and have fun, listen to music and enjoy lots of activities down the river. Right, and, and I noticed there were, of course, uh, young couples along the bridge. That's about late in the afternoon, just taking a stroll, taking pictures, holding hands. Looked like quite a romantic moment there. Let me tell you, Panina, Walking across the Nile in Egypt is a very romantic experience that almost every Egyptian has done in, in one way or the other during his life. And it's very associated to Egyptians being part of the Nile. Right. And the boat with all the music blaring, I, I saw you dancing to a bit of that music earlier on. I mean, people come here to eat out, perhaps, I don't know, do weddings even happen on these boats, but maybe? Yes, exactly. Weddings, parties, festivals sometimes. It's like the place for Egyptians to go out for. And the weather is usually great at night by the Nile. That's why you'll find lots of Egyptians coming down to river after a very long day of work. And as I say, it's almost summer nights that gets Egyptians around the Nile. It's your home city, because this is your home city, is quite interesting. Because first, it's a city of 20 million people. It's been very instrumental in shaping the political landscape of this country. I mean, we had the uh, 2011 uprising right down here in Takri Square. And, and also, I've noticed another interesting thing is, traffic here gets worse at night as opposed to most other places where it's worse during the day and eases off at night as people go home but if you can camera can get down to the street now it's plenty of cars jammed in the street because as i said some people are coming back from a, a very long day of work and others are getting out to start their day out or their night out with their family and have some fun drinking some tea or maybe some eating thermos or you know grilled uh, corn this is very famous very typical egyptian here you should try it panina i will most definitely so 
you could say the city is more perhaps active during the night than it is during the day. Almost, I would say that. It's quite interesting. It's a city that never sleeps, almost quite literally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, but yes. it's not all fun and games here in Cairo. Uh, just further away, not too far from Cairo, is a very serene, very tranquil island. And people there are making money quite literally from the Nile waters. Here's for me, Damila. Downtown Cairo and millions of inhabitants. Capital city filled with traffic and noise. But just outside the city, there's an oasis of calm and tranquility. The ever encroaching reach of the metropolis surrounds this island. On the map, it's called Jazirat al Quraitin. To the people of Olivia, it's the island of honey making. They form a community in the middle of the Nile, north of Cairo, that's almost completely self-sufficient. Families have lived here for decades, maintaining a simple life. Even as just across the river, the city grows ever bigger around them. Bassem Abdelhai's family's been farming here for over 40 years. It's hard, but it's a life he's grown to love. And it's a life lived in what's in effect a giant garden. Much of the land is set aside for roses. They're known across the region for their sweet scent and are big sellers in Cairo. Jazirat al Quraitin's bananas are also in much demand. When will they be ready for harvest? الموز طبعا بيكون من الفاكهه الوحيده اللي ما بيستويش على الشجر وعلشان يستوي لازم بيخش في حاجه اسمها ثلاجه حراره ازاي بيعرف الفلاح ان الموز استوت او لا من الزهره دي كل يوم بيقع منها ورقه لوحدها على الارض زي كده لما الزهره كلها بتخلص ما بيكونش جواها ولا ورقه بيعرف كده الفلاح ان الموز استوت بعد كده بيقطعها من نصها بيرمي النص اللي فوق بياخد بس الموزه دي بيحطها جوه غرفه بيحط معاها فحم بيطلع حراره الحراره بتنشف الغذاء اللي جوه الموزه بتجف خالص بتموت بتصفر وبعد كده بننزلها على السوق ليه بنقطعها من النص زي كده عشان دي جواها في ميه فيها غاز عايزين نستفاد بيها مره تانيه Water is pumped directly from the Nile which in turn feeds the ditches which crisscross the island It's a very simple setup. What you see here demonstrates what helped create Egypt, channeling water from the Nile to bring life to the land. Meeting for lunch on the banks of this great river are some of the island's honey farmers. There's a real sense of shared purpose and community here. Self-sustainability stretches to the food. Everything we're eating here today is from the island. There's cheese as well as a flatbread and the honey, its special and distinctive color mostly comes from the bees in the area. Basim, tell me about the honey, because it really is quite delicious. Of course, we have, for the Jazeera, because it has the trees, it has all the trees. We get the trees, and then 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 we get the trees. جبنا المناحل وحطيناها جوه الجزيره والنحل بقى يتغذى وبقى يطلع انتاج كويس جدا والعسل هنا طبيعي 100% مفيش مش محتاجين احنا نحط فيه اي مواد غش خاطر احنا عندنا الجزيره كلها مبنيه على الزروع وكده. Honey making depends on the season and slows down in the colder months. It's a very beautiful time of, of day now, Basim. Tell me what attracts you to being here? بالنسبة للجزيرة اللي احنا عايشين فيها هنا انا حابب ان انا اعيش فيها عشان الجو بتاعها كويس بعيد عن عوادم السيارات او اي مصانع او اي حاجة بعيد عن دوشة القاهرة فانا حابب ان انا اعيش فيها عشان جوها كويس وناسها ناس طيبين واتعودت على كده وعايز اعيش زي اهلي. It's a circle of life played out in the middle of the Nile. And after a hard day's work, the men relax at the shisha and sweet Arabic coffee in a workplace they also call home. <laughs> a day in the life on the island is drawing to a close and so far of all the places I've been to on the Nile this is certainly the most tranquil it's quite apparent why for those living on the island of honey making life is so sweet 
Yes, for me, the life is so sweet as far as you keep it simple, not polluted and away from the noise. But on the other hand, people wouldn't take anything away from the city. They would rather enjoy the life and power and noise of the city. It's up to you, our viewers, to decide where would you like to live. Benina, tell me, where would you rather live, in the city or in the countryside? I don't even have to think about that, Mohammed. I grew up in the countryside. I was born and raised there. So any day given the option, I would live there. I mean, it's a very productive place. And I guess that's what I love about it. Because despite the laid back nature, there's a lot of productivity involved. In most cases, almost in every country you go, the countryside is always the food basket of the country. A lot of productivity, but at the same time, we have all of this peace and quiet. And like Pamita mentioned, the sense of community for me, nothing beats that exactly i agree with you panina countryside is the best way for living and living in tomorrow follow us guys will be very interesting in our coverage here over the river nile we will have a race yes we will have a race tomorrow we'll see who will win the race and we will take more about life here at night in cairo that's it for now guys thanks for watching back to the studio